Aussie gamers, welcome to the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. The podcast created in the southern hemisphere where the internet is slow and the prices are as high as the temperature. Here are your hosts, Lucas and Brad. Hey Aussie gamers, this is episode 146 and today is Friday the 14th, ooh so close, of October 2016. I am your host Lucas and here with me is my good friend and co-host Red. How are you mate? Look, it's kind of weird man. It's like we've been able to get excited about doing all these one-off podcasts and one-off shows with a, a special element attached that actually going back to a normal podcast has that element of, oh, wow, I haven't done this in a long time. Yeah, I know exactly what you, you're saying, because it's been three... Four weeks. Four, four weeks, shows. Four shows where we haven't actually sat down in front of our computers with our normal uh, like set list, if you want to call it that, or script or whatever, and uh, and just done the normal show like we normally do. So it's, it's a bit strange coming back to it, but it's good. It's good feeling. Yes. Good feeling of comfort. But anyway, I'm happy to be back. Before we start, here is this week's show in preview. First up, we'll have video game discussion, and no doubt we'll have a fair bit of cool stuff there. Then we'll do video game news, and in this week's news we have Lizard Squad Arrests, woohoo, full VR launch lineup, Steam to get native DualShock 4 support, you'll be happy with that, Red. Yes. Modern Warfare Remaster Requires Disc, PlayStation VR Sold Out, and a Cuphead update. Then after the news, we will do What's That Sound, and then Red's Shout. So, without further ado, as per usual, Red, video game discussion. All right, fuck, where do I start? Well... At the top. At the top. <laughs> I've, I've finally played... Uh, what's the name of that game now? The Little Ones. Um, what is it? Something War? Oh, the, uh, this War of Mine. This war of mine, Jesus Christ, for a game that I wanted to play so much, I couldn't even remember the name of it. Yeah. Um, you've played the original, yeah? Yeah, I've played just the normal one on, on Steam, yep. So I don't understand how it differs. No, me so neither, because I, I haven't played the little ones. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I just jumped in, and it takes a, puts a whole new spin on the crafting survival game. Yeah. With the 2D, I love the 2D, or 2.5D. Yeah. Everything's timed. You need rest and food and water, but you need to craft everything in order to purify your water or to cook your food or you end up eating it raw. Uh, it's actually got a really small learning curve, if you know what I mean. Everything's quite uh, explanatory. You'd like, you don't go through a tutorial or such, but it's all on the screen um, given to you in a, in a way that um, is really easy to understand. Yeah. It's, it's, so far, it sounds the same. I'll pull you up if you say something that's fairly different. Mm, so... There was a heavy element of story with the bios and everything like that, and you're able to read in and listen to conversations and, and read into each character's different traits. And uh, So basically, I've put probably two hours into it as a downtime game. Um, so I've just been making my way around the house and clearing up foliage and debris and scavenging and making keys and unlocking doors, and then nighttime hits and you go, oh, shit. And all of a sudden, you you got to assign someone to be a guard and someone to rest and to someone to go out scavenging. And because they've all got their own strengths and weaknesses, it kind of gives you three characters off the get-go that are strong in each element. Mm. So, you, so you send your scavenger out and you, yeah. you have your best defense on, um, on uh, watch and you put your worker to bed. So it kind of works really, really well how that folds into it and makes it just a little bit easier for you to start. The thing I found, though, you have very little inventory space, and with no real direction in the game, you don't know what to pick up, what to leave. Yeah. So I just grab everything. <laughs> and, like, when I've played it through, there's, like, there's a real tearing aspect of... If you've only got one gun, which I only did in one of my playthroughs, I only had the one gun firearm, and I had, you know, obviously about three or four people back at home... And you want to send one of them out at night. Do you send the guy out with the gun, and then leave everyone defenseless back at home, or do you leave it at home and leave the guy that's going out scavenging with no weapon? So there's there's a lot to take into consideration there with it. It's it's pretty cool. But from what you're saying, the little one sounds exactly the same. Might just be different characters. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. 
but yeah, as you say, do you sacrifice the safety of one or do you sacrifice the safety of them all? And it actually has that good a backstory and bio that it kind of drags you into it and you feel accountable for these people. Yeah, and a lot of the, the feels, as you're mentioning, like when you, you go out, you're not... This, this game doesn't really have, like, a you versus them sort of thing. It's not like, you know, The Last of Us where they, they were clear clear baddies, right, that you're up against. Yeah. These are other people that are trying to survive that you're stealing things from. Yeah. And then it's, well, you know, do I need this more than them? Should I take them or should I leave some things? Because you don't have to take everything. And, and it, it sort of can be, if you get into it and pay real attention to the lore and the story behind it, the struggles, it can lead you down that path where you're like, well, should I? Should I do this? I can, but should I? Mm. It's, it's uh, built into the game quite well. So that's something I look forward to exploring more. I, the reason I jumped on it is because I picked it up for about 12 bucks. It's always been sitting around that $30 mark, and it's like, no, I really don't want to punch that much, that many funds into it. It's probably mm. worth it, but you could always get it for 8 to $12 on the computer. <clears throat> yeah, see, I've, I've got it on Steam. You can get it on PlayStation. Is it PlayStation as well? Yes, you can get it on the PlayStation. Yep. PS4, Xbox One. I've just checked up. It is available on iOS and Android. It's. I'm not sure which version is on the on the iPhone though, because I'm looking at it and it's just called This War of Mine, which sort of makes me think that it's just the same as the PC one. Uh, it's five ninety nine Australian on the Aussie store, but when you look at the screenshots, one of them has one. The first screenshot just says This War of Mine. You know, there's a little uh, watermark Child. in the corner. Yeah. And the next screenshot says This War of Mine. The little ones. Oh, so it would translate really well to a touchscreen. Yeah, I, I think it would work well on probably an iPad. It'd be ideal, not a phone. But um, yeah, I don't know which version it is. I don't know if it's this War of Mine or the little ones. But and but from what you're saying, I don't I don't know what's. Oh, hang on. It says here what's new. Eleventh of October. This update allows you to buy expansion the little ones. That features new civilians, including child characters and new scenarios. It's a substantial expansion. You will experience wartime survival stories from an entirely new perspective, that of a child. That's the difference. Okay, yeah, maybe you got to care for, yeah, a child. Or, or you can play as a child, one of the... Oh, well, that's probably what you meant, yeah. Yeah. But there you go, that answered my question. Thank you, <laughs> iTunes update on the store. <laughs> there you go, that's Apple on the... when we get no answer from Microsoft or Sony. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, five ninety nine. that's cheap. Absolutely. Yeah, nice stuff. All right, what's next? Uh, I played that baseball game that's on the Games of Gold. Oh, uh, I haven't booted that yet. Superstar under Doobie Dabba Dooba Big Bats bloody arcade baseball game. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. It shares one thing in common with every baseball game that I've played, other than the fact it's baseball. I was going to say, what, you play baseball? <laughs> heaps of little uh, bits and pieces, heaps of little buttons and quick, uh, what do they call them, like the hotkeys or the, the combinations to, to slide, to jump, to dive, to throw, to steal a base, for one person to steal a base or for everyone to run and Jesus. It's just really complex. Like, obviously, if you live and breathe it, like, you give me an AFL game and there's a, a button to a normal handball, but there's a combination for a, 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 a big handball or there's a big mark or, as opposed to a normal mark, like, modifiers, I'll, that, that'll sink straight in because I know the game. I love the game. But when it comes to baseball, trying to have all these bloody rules and like i understand the rules of it but trying to get all these modifiers and little one percenters via the the controller it doesn't sink in because i just don't instinctively think what to do when i'm playing if you know what i mean yeah well with baseball it's not massive in australia but generally if i think if you asked anybody from australia what are the rules to baseball someone throws the ball a pitcher you hit it as long as it's within the the arc of the diamond you run and try and get around back around a home base and that's how you score. But then yeah. there's little things about how to steal bases, when you can run and when you're not allowed to, 
re- relay throws. There's a button yeah. to relay a throw, and you select who to catch it, and then where to throw it. And it's always, it's you're almost inputting selections before they're actually happening on screen, as opposed to to the second reaction when you're hitting. If you know what I mean. So yeah. it's different. It's not bad. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It all works. There's no lag. None of that business. But it's just so much to try and cram in the cranium that I just yeah. I struggled a bit. But baseball is one of those strange games where it's there's no real downtime. Like you know how in <clears throat> excuse me, like a game of uh, rugby league or, or Aussie Rules or whatever, if the ball goes out, you, you, the the game stops right? yes. until it's reset and started again by either a throw in or whatever. But with yep. baseball. Like everyone, you've got. I don't know if this this translates into the game or not, but you've got to be on the ball all the time because even when the game is stopped in inverted commas, like you could, that's when you can steal bases, and if the other opposition's not paying attention, you can steal a base. So you got yeah. to pay attention and and throw the ball to that base to try and tag them out, stuff like that. It's pretty pretty hard, but I, I, this game looks a little bit more arcadey, isn't it? <clears throat> it is very arcadey, but it's got all those elements. Okay. It ha- it's got all the, the elements like you can get person on base two to try and steal base three with a certain combination of bumpers and Y to um, X, or you can press uh, one button and they all try and steal a base, or yeah, just little modifiers and everything like that. And and it's almost a shame because I've always wanted to get into a baseball game, and at the moment with your gold subscription, you can get uh, that RBI. Um, 16 for about nine bucks, and that's cr- getting a little bit closer to the um, simulator that that EA brings out each year. Uh, so it's got slightly realer graphics. It's got licensed players, but it's still got an arcade feel to it. So yeah, I like three four years ago, I probably would have jumped straight on this. Oh, sport game, yep, mine. But I think it was really cool that I got the chance to. Um, play this game with gold baseball game and help me make my mind up one thing i will say though and you know how we're just talking about the rules and how we probably wouldn't understand it mm-hmm. if if you go to the social tab on the xbox yeah i think i think it's called the social tab where you where your screenshots and your achievements all pop up uh the people that actually made the game have put three or four videos in there uh, explaining the rules and explaining how to play yeah, for our, our dumb asses down in, in Australia. It's, it's, that's exactly right. So <clears throat> yeah, well, it's, nice. it's it's uh, it's well accommodated for, and it's just something I hadn't haven't really seen across at PlayStation. It's like it's us sending AFL Live across to America. You know, yeah. you'd probably get seven people that would pick it up because they were born in Australia. Yeah, but um, a lot of fun. It's very colourful. I love it. It's all, it's got heavy metal music all the way through it. It's I think it's made by or it's got some. It's either developed or produced or distributed by a, a mob called Metalheads. That's mad. So, I, I love a game that goes in full metal because it doesn't happen very often. Nah, what was the last one you got gizzy about? Galaxy something? Oh, that was um, yeah, Rebel Galaxy. That that yeah. wasn't metal, but it was like that was the like. Cool, a, Oh, that was grungy country. That, yeah, it was like, yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. Grungy country. Like, I've never even thought of that type of music, but I actually quite liked it. That yeah, very good. kid rock sort of shit that was. Yeah. Sons so, of Anarchy. Yeah. It's, I think the, the same people that did the Rebel Galaxy did the Sons of Anarchy uh, soundtrack. Oh, okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very worth the worth um checking out well it costs nothing so well yeah. essentially um probably other than my mobile games of clash royale which has recently got a cool update no i've gotten um, back into that uh, yeah. my man. was the update like just to make sure that luke one wins a lot because i've been winning a lot <laughs> i think it um uh, it, the matchmaking's a little better because I've been able to... Because where I'm at, I've got like 2,600 trophies. I'd win one, then lose eight, and then win one and lose eight. Now I can string a couple together. Mm. Well, I've played probably well, maybe a couple of dozen games in the last few days. I think I've only lost two. That's a go. That's, that's definitely not how I used to play. <laughs> I used to... <laughs> it was like the other way around. 
Well, the cool thing is about you being away and then coming back, every time you request a card, I'm like, yep, there you go. <laughs> oh, but you know <laughs> what the go. funny thing is? I'll request a card, and then you'll request the same card, and I'll just fucking give them back to you. I'll give them back to you too, because <laughs> it's worth the money and experience. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I've, I've got it at the moment. I've just given you one of those... Um, Rockets. Rocket thingies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need those. All right, so without further ado, the two biggest games I've played this week. <clears throat> we'll start off with uh, Gears of War, because we can probably both talk about this, yes? Oh, Gears of War. You smashed multiplayer last night, man. <laughs> Did not. Don't patronise me. <laughs> you smashed one round out of about nine. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more to the point. <laughs> uh, to your credit, though, I thought after the first round, because you were like zero and six, I thought it was going to be, nah, fuck it. I've tried it. This is not for me. <laughs> and I'm sitting there cringing. I'm going, this is a three round thing, dude. Don't rage quit on me. And then you come out and you go like six and three or seven and three. And you went, oh, I got some kills. Yeah, I know. I went, they, but they just keep coming oh. in that round. <clears throat> it's like, oh, this is this this might work, this might work. And then we eventually won that game, and then we played the next one. We got fucking annihilated. Like, I got annihilated as well. Jason yeah, see, got annihilated. I, I don't mind that. If, if I get smashed, but you guys get smashed too, I don't feel so bad. So that's cool. No, but, <laughs> no it's Gears of War, man. I, I'll, I'll keep at it. I won't be happy. I'll get the shits, but so do you. So does Jason when you get oh, smashed. Oh, I crack it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Don't get but me wrong. It's Gears of War. It's not exactly Call of Duty. I think the the playing field will level out a little bit. It's it's hot topic at the moment. The game's only been out a week. It is hot topic at the moment. It almost so, made my news. So it'll it'll sort of plateau out, and I think I'll um I'll start to get a little bit better and competitive. But um the the horde mode where, is where it's at because you can have a good run with your mates, and it's. Uh, I, I think that's. It's competitive, but better, better like a, a better team aspect there because you can work together a little bit easier. I think. Well, when you're we were online. lucky enough to have our inaugural horde mode with all friends. Yeah, that was great. Like we had what uh, Brendan Brownie Brown, good good member yep. of the page. We had Snoogans, yourself, me. Uh, Weeksy for a bit and uh, and Repremier too. Not all at the same time because what is it? Only five people. Yep. It's better than fucking three. Yep. Stick your fire teams. But uh, yeah, that that was good fun. And what we max out that first night, we got to what level twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven, twenty eight, something like that. And that was playing it on normal mode, I think. Yes. Which is um, one up from the easiest. I've since then reached level 41 in horde mode with some randoms. Yep, yep. The only thing is, that takes a long time to do. Well, it does, doesn't it? Like, if you're going to start from round one, wave one, that's that's a big investment. If you're going to have a good slog and good crack at it, like, you're going to be there for a couple of hours. Oh, yeah, easy. Mm. But you can, you can option to start at, like, wave 15. You can start at any wave you want. Yeah. How good are the graphics? Yeah, like, beautiful. And it just, uh, it took me a few moments, like a few games, probably a few hours actually, to get used to the whole running from cover to cover over cover. Uh, but now I've got it. You can just seamlessly move around from cover to cover while sprinting. And just the fact you can change guns while sprinting, you can reload while sprinting. You, you, even though your fingers are moving around, like I don't know how you hit your D-pad, but I use my my right thumb on my D-pad. Like I'll oh, go for you? my aim. Yes, yes, so I can keep moving. Yeah, okay. No, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd use my left. Yeah, okay. No, I always I duck down with I duck across with my right thumb for some reason. I don't know. It's just the way I feel comfortable doing it. Sometimes, if I'm feeling particularly um, competitive, I'll actually. Um, glue a, a pen to my nose and just use that just I've a never, squiggle i've never done that before that's stupid <laughs> that is lies i use my erection oh wow <laughs> <laughs> anyway the campaign so you've yeah, done yeah, that yeah i've finished it three times <laughs> <laughs> you fuck, you bullshit artist. I reckon you haven't even touched it. 
no, I've looked at it on the main menu. It says <laughs> solo and camp, a uh, solo and co-op, and I went, "That's nice." There's, <laughs> there's collectibles. I know, no, and, you... and trophies or achievements, if you will. Achievements with trophy pictures, icons. I, yeah. uh, you, you would probably cringe. I'm two acts or episodes or whatever you want to call it into it. So I've played it for about, oh, I'm only guessing two hours, two and a half hours. And I've got eight collect eight collectibles. Mm, how There's, many do you reckon you've missed? I reckon I've missed about sixteen. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Luke! I, I, you know me. <laughs> I don't look for them. If like I'll look, I'll look. I'll jump, run into a, a room, check me corners. If if I see a glint, I'll go and pick it up. But I'm not going to specifically hunt every corner of a room just to find. A collectible because I'm there for the immersion. If I'm in in the midst of a a, a war, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to stop and look for things. I'm in. I'm there. I'm like, right, we've just killed all these guys. Let's go. Let's move on. And I'm let's let's keep going. Let's progress. Well, me. This is the sort of game which we we do horde mode over and over again. We do multiplayer over and over again. There's no real differences other than the variables that are, that are in the moment. And normally campaign is where the graphics are at their best because they require little to no network connectivity. Yeah. And that's where it's just been tried and tested and built ground up and then everything else is a byproduct of what they've done with the campaign. So the campaign is going to have not only the story but the best graphics, the best environments and the best battles. So you're going to want to experience that. I, I reckon this will, might be the game that will break my trend and I'll just play it. And just immerse myself. Turned up a little bit harder, not the stupid difficulty. Turned up a little bit harder, make it a little tricksy, and really grind out and have a whole lot of fucking fun with it. And then you just turn the difficulty down, down, and you and you do a dedicated collection run. And then you turn the difficulty up to insane and challenge yourself at the hardest difficulty. And I reckon you're going to be able to play this game two, three, four times. Yeah, well, you have to if you want to hundred percent it. Have you seen that seriously four point achievement? Yeah, it's worth 200 gamer score. Yeah, <laughs> the, those ser- <laughs> seriously trophies have, have been in, trophies, achievements have been in all of the games. And they've been like, there's been some that was like, you had to get, oh, is it like 100,000 or a million kills or something like that? It's fucking yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, because we are playing Gears of War 2 the other day, you and I, and then Weeksy and I, and it come up 100 of 500,000 or something, yeah. and I'm like, why are you keeping track? Why don't you just count and bring it up every thousand instead of every ten? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know how to to gloat or to pump up gears of my enjoyment with Gears of War Four so far. Um, I'm so thankful to have an Xbox, mate. Mm, yeah. And, and and I feel really guilty of all the shit things I used to say about it just to get a laugh. So this is the last time I'm going to admit to being an asshole, but um. I love my Xbox. I I, I love uh, Microsoft. Uh, well, the bloody network is is brilliant. The loadout of the <clears throat> the um, the menu system is a little bit clunky still, but it all works now. I know what's what's going on. People go, oh, but you can't get to there as quick. It's like, but you can still get there. Yeah. I'm yeah. still asking little bits and questions on how to do this and how to do that. New boys are more than accommodating to help me out. So, um. I love it. I love the control. I love my Lucid Sound LS30s, which we're coming to you live to de- Well, not so live, but I'm live right now. But that's what I'm using right now. So if you notice the change in my voice from other podcasts, that's what we're using at the moment. Uh, just to digress, the review is on YouTube. I think I've told you about eight times this week. So fucking look at it. <laughs> um, the, 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 it's re- really loud. I'm getting right into my games. Um, yeah, love the, love the Xbox. Love just, the Xbox. Just quickly before we move on from that, as for the campaign, as I said, I've played it a little bit. I'm loving it. I'm loving the story. I think you're going to miss out on a little bit of the understanding, not necessarily understanding the story, but a little bit of the heartfelt and the meaning behind certain things that go on if you haven't experienced 1, 2, and 3. Because yeah. there are characters in there that uh, that have a personality that you've learnt through one, two, and three, which uh, you're going to be thrown 
this this character and and you're not really going to understand why they are how they are and and you know why they're in in the place that they're at right now so you do you do miss a little bit i mean it's it's no you don't have to play one two and three to understand four and enjoy it but it, it, i think it would help so i'd recommend playing the the trilogy before this one but it's not it's not required but uh, I'm loving it so far. I'm loving the gameplay. Um, the enemies, when they drop out of the sky, the robots drop out of these... I don't even know what that shape is. It's not a round ball, but it's like a ball but made out of um, sides. Oh, okay, like the hexag... Uh, the pen, yes, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, hexag, pentag, whatever it is, but it's like a, a shaped thing that's in a spherical thing. They drop out of the, the drop ships. And they, the sound they make when they hit the deck just sounds so good coming out of the subwoofer on my surround sound. They're all like, boom, 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 boom. And then they all so it's break a, it's out. a hexagonal spherical prism. Yeah. I don't know if it's hex, but it's, yeah, that, that's close. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> good job. But yeah, it's so good. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying the gameplay. And we, I haven't played it in co-op yet, but there's a lot of really good, good moments for co-op. Like, there was one section where... It gave me the option, do I want to go left or do I want to go right? And it does that throughout the, the original trilogy too. And I chose left, and so I went left with one uh, uh, character that was just computer controlled, and the other two that I was with went the other way. And there was a part where they called over to me on the radio and said, oh, our path is blocked, can you see it from your side? And I had a vantage point, so I shot out the shit that was behind the door blocking it so they were open, able to open it and then later on in that that section same thing happened where i was like i can't get through this door so they shot uh, a barricade that was holding barrels which made the barrels fly down and uh and smash the door open for me <laughs> make sure you get out of the way when they do that because the barrels will kill you <laughs> but um but no, it's it's uh, it's going really good. I'm I'm really interested in going back in and, and playing the the whole story through. So that's probably what I want to do for the later today is get back into the uh, the campaign after the podcast. So it's it's a, a, a real good game that uh, I recommend. Gears of War Four. You, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. You didn't get the early release copy, did you? No. You got well, what we call it the povo, the pleb. Yeah, the pleb pack. But I mean, I mean that by no disrespect. I got the ultimate pleb edition. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did that come with one, two, three, and judgment? Yes. Yeah, it did. Yes, yeah. that cool. Because I didn't know if that was a selling point to pre-order the ultimate edition. Well, that that there you go. You just said that you should play one, two, and three, and they've turned around and said there's no reason why you can't because of people exactly like me who didn't have a 360, but now um, in the later, <laughs> well. The later aspects of this generation, because we're about to get the new generation in the next 12 months for both consoles, it gives everyone the opportunity, and there's no excuse not to play 1, 2, and 3, so I'm still going to play 2. We, we, you and I have got a, a save file on 2 to finish, and uh, Wixie and I have got an earlier save file uh, on 2, so um, he's insisting to play 3 before playing campaign but he wants to finish Mafia and Tomb Raider before he gets there, so it just it's a, it's plenty of time for us all to get him around and play. Maybe you'd like to come back and play four player on number three with us, and we'll get Jason or someone involved or yeah, Snoogans if he's never it. played it. When you get up to it, let me know. I've got it installed, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, and one thing I will say, I know we're banging on about Gears of War, but it is a major release. Uh, I told you, but um, I do have them backwards compatible. I've got them on. Um, Xbox 360 discs sitting there, and yep. I've had them installed on my Xbox since then. And when we went to install 4, it had the 11 gig update, and Weeks and I were like, oh, well, let's just um, kick off a fresh campaign on 2 and let it uh, install an update and everything like that. And then it said, oh, please insert the disc. And I'm like, oh, fuck off, are you serious? But then we turned around and we used the code that was given provided for yep. Years of War, or we put all the codes in, right? And then we put the Gears of War 4 D disc in to resume installing and then hit execute. And because we've inputted that code, we we're able to play it without having to fucking re-download it like you would if you had a, a physical game but then went and bought it digitally on yeah. the PlayStation Store. You have to re-download yeah. the fucking thing. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good to do. Well, that, that's the, the backwards compatibility thing. When you put the disc in, you're not actually playing anything off that disc. That, nah, it's your that license does, or whatever. It doesn't even install it off the disc. When you put the disc in, it's kind of like a key to download the digital version. So the version that you'd play with the disc is identical, 100%, to the version you'd play using a code. So that's that's good that they've at least done that. Because I know on the PlayStation 4, if you have a disc version of a game and then purchase the digital one, you need to download the digital one. It doesn't just make it so Overwrite, you don't need the yeah. disc anymore. You have to delete the disc version or you'll have two versions of the game on there. Yeah, and... You know, like 10 gig for you, you you can get it done in 5, 10 minutes, you know, depending on the weather. Not really. I'm just saying that because I can't pinpoint how long it'll take you to do 10 gigs. But 10 gig for me, that's four and a half, five hours. Yeah, I was going to say, are you talking about me or you? Yeah. <laughs> Smart ass. I downloaded um, 19 gigabyte for um, uh, Drive Club in 60 minutes while two other downloads were do- going. <laughs> Like, that is crazy cool. <laughs> but yeah, Gears of War, uh, I cannot speak for the campaign because I have not been there, but it gets a 10 out of 10. I'm just disappointed that they went back to two players. And then they try to shovel the shit in your face by saying, oh, we're going back to its roots. Uh, Gears of War 1 was two, two-player two co-op only, so that's what we're doing here. No, you're not. You, that's just lazy. No, the common denominator is coalition, isn't it? Their games have all been two-player. Oh uh, well, no, the first one, first and second one weren't Coalition. Oh, weren't they? No, Epic. Epic did one, two, and three. Oh, duh. Coalition only jumped in with the remaster. Duh. My bad. Oh, Uneducated and, I, Xbox I think, fan. I think they did Judgment too. Okay. Yeah, I always forget about Judgment. Forget it exists. Not a bad game though. Yeah, the best thing about that it's a prequel, so that's not. You don't yeah. really need to smash that out if you played one, two, and three. And now no, but four. it is good. It's uh, it's a side side thing with um, Captain Baird and how he gets um, stripped of his captaincy and why he doesn't get the leader leading role in the Gears of War trilogy. Because there's a section in one of the games where he gets a bit pissed off. Um, I don't want to spoil things, but he gets a bit pissed off that he, he doesn't get the. Um, the the leader of the the gears in like the the team that you play in with Marcus Phoenix and that and Judgment explains what it's it, the whole basically the whole story in Judgment it's not about this but it, the whole game shows you why he he wasn't chosen and why Marcus got the role because of the yeah, actions no, that it. happened during Judgment so it's, so it's a good game real good game on in its own merits and it's got the same technology that Gears of War 3 had because it was made after 3 so I recommend it mm. uh, last but not least I know I'm taking up a bit of time so I'll be really nice and short and sharp Mafia 3 yeah. uh, one of the best narrative deliveries I've ever experienced yeah it looks good looks sometimes good you, you'll understand, and, and TV shows try to do it every now and again, and movies, and you get lost, where they'll tell a story, but then it'll flick to the future, where they have, there's a review, uh, an interview or a report on uh, said uh, in, events that you're just watching, or in, you're in the middle of experiencing in the yeah. current timeline, and they'll go backwards and forwards, you've got young, you've got old, and... It can kind of mix up a little bit and get you a little bit confused. You know what the game did that for me was uh, Black Ops. Black Ops 2. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Exactly what I mean. And it gets a little confusing because when you get a little bit of narration, you don't know if it's being narrated from the future or the present or the past. Yeah. And it gets... This is delivered in such a powerful way. Uh, The story is is delivered by four characters. Um. Uh, Clay, the main guy, a priest, a CIA CIA operative, and a detective. Mm-hmm. And you get to interact with them in the everyday open world environment, do missions with them, for them, against them, dot, dot, dot. But then it, you'll do something major in the, in the plot, like you'll do a major a main mission, and then it'll cut to a 5, 10, 15 minute cutscene where it goes forward in time and you 
oh, and, and they tell recall the events that you've just done, but from their perspective and the differing perspectives, to whether they're pro or against what you're doing as Lincoln Clay, and it's just so powerful. You know how you know me better than anyone. I'll jump in. I'll play the multiplayer. I'll play the horde mode, and then the story will come on and we'll air story. Click, mm-hmm. click X to fucking skip scene. Yep, no worries. Let's get back to playing. I now hang out for cutscenes in this game. I just it's so powerful, and there is a little um uh, screen at the start from the developers, uh, like a PSA, where it says uh, the racism and the slander and the swearing and the treatment of um, ethnics is representative of the day, yeah. Uh, which is being nineteen sixty eight, and you'll walk into a shop. And they'll go, this is a white shop only, get out, you know, so-and-so. Because oh, your and character that, that, is black. The main character is a black guy, right? Yeah, your yeah, black mum Italian father, hence the mob connection. Ah, uh, right, yep. But you're black, you know. Once yeah. you go black, you, you can never really go back. Michael Jackson, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's always but, an exception. <laughs> There's always an exception, mate. Uh, so it's very powerful. There is F words, there are C words, there are N words. Um, and I respectfully won't. I know, I know if I said them now, you uh, um, like I'll say fuck. But if I said them now, you'd take them in the context that I was quoting the game and I meant nothing by it, but it's still that powerful that they'll be referred to as the C word and the N word. So uh, I and I actually get off on that. I don't get off on the on the racial side of it. I get off on the fact that it's so real you've seen this in a lot of movies um like uh, the football one where the blacks come in and forrest gump even touches on it where the we're watching that at your place yeah. before i come home yeah about the the blacks joining the the college and everything like that and he was like hey yeah that's what um, i was saying other oh, coons want to get into the college <laughs> well, and my mum gets raccoons <laughs> broom yeah my my mum <laughs> Pushes the raccoons off the porch with the broom or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I've I've had a few videos over the last couple of well, over the last week or so with the with my recap and saying and I've uh, highlighted how I think everyone just deserves to be happy, whatever race, religion, or orientation you possess, just be happy. So, um, I'm not racist at all. Like we all cross lines and tell jokes and stuff like that but yeah i don't no one's hurt in the process but yeah look I, I, i'm like like you said though and it's a, it's a bit of an australian thing we do make jokes like that that are, are pretty horrible but we you make them among friends that understand the that the, there's no literal intent to what we're saying oh it's no different than the making an incest joke about a tasmanian yeah, well, that's it. You, but you got to make it in the right company so the people understand where you're coming from. Nothing burns me more than somebody who makes a racist joke but means it. Oh, a bigot, yeah. Oh, I hate it, man. And I, I crack it at people for it. And if I run into people that are being racist, I, 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 um, I'll give you a little bit of a story here. And I, I'll leave the context out of it. But I was yeah. having a conversation, which I thought was a professional conversation with somebody in a line of business similar to mine, and he said to he said to me, "They're fucked, aren't they?" And I said, "What do you mean?" And he was referring to a Sudanese person. He goes, "Yeah, oh, okay. they're, they're kind. They're fucked, aren't they?" And I think he was kind of expecting me to to join in, and sort of have like that sort of misery guts thing i'll try and recruit this guy so we can bag out and be racist and i said i don't know what you're talking about if you're saying what i think you're saying fuck off yeah and he just looked at me like oh (laughs) and he just went about and did his profession so to speak but i won't i won't tolerate racism from anyone but like you said though in a game where it's contextual and factual and proving a point and showing what the era was accurately brilliant i would this it's I, brilliant i haven't played uh, mafia 3 i've played mafia 2 and i loved mafia 2 and it felt real gritty underground underbelly sort of and it felt accurate till its time i actually 
purchased a, a 50s soundtrack after playing that game to listen to while I was playing other games because it, <laughs> it got me into it. Um, but yeah, I, I really do look forward to playing Mafia 3. I've just got too much on my plate at the moment, as you'll oh, see. When I'm done, as I said, I'm sending it up and it can sit there until you're ready. Yeah, awesome. I'll appreciate that. Soundtrack's the best soundtrack I've played since oh, San Andreas. Oh, yeah. It rhymes, and everything's from the 60s. So there's what, Born on the Bayou, Creedence Clearwater Revival, um, and uh, Fortunate Son, and then you've got your a rubber ball, and I'm bouncing, bouncing back, back to, to you. Rubber so it's got your, your, crooners, <laughs> your crooners, 50s and 60s, and a little red riding hood. And oh, then you, yes. Then, then you have the Beatles, and then you'll have the Rolling Stones, and then uh, Elvis Presley, a little more see, something, a little more satisfaction, or whatever it is, I don't know. Little, yeah, little that, that's, that song without, without the remix. <laughs> yeah, a little less conversation, a little more action. Yeah, so that's in there. It's it's got a um, hundred hundred songs, I think. We had a hundred songs on there. The collectibles, Playboy magazines, and then you go in and look at them, and you get one or two pictures from each Playboy magazine. Boobies. You want to go collect those porn mags? Yes. Yeah, I'll I'll change my tune for those kind of collectibles. <laughs> you will fucking will. Why don't you see? Because the, the actual icon on your mini maps, Playboy Bunny. You go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I say a Playboy bunny or a record, because you can also collect um, uh, record covers. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, Mafia 2 had the Playboys or some, something yeah. similar. And if you collect the, uh, the record covers, you get more songs on your playlist. Oh, good. And something, you know how you always look at the details, the small details of 1% in games, and you go, oh, yeah, cool. Hmm. So you got the townie radio station, right? You go out into the bayou where the crocodiles and everything are, that the radio station breaks up and then you've got to change the radio station because you've no longer got reception. Oh, good. But then you're driving through the town and you go down under a tunnel, like un- under an overpass or something, into a tunnel, your radio actually starts to phase in and out and lose reception until you hit the other end of the tunnel and it comes back clear. Oh, that's good. I made that comment about Forza Horizon 3 where I said you can tell it's not realistic because you're in the outback in Australia yeah. and your radio still <laughs> fucking works. Listen to CFM, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, via really quickly, combat is cover based stealth. Yep. You can go guns blazing, but um, I'm playing on the hardest difficulty for a trophy. Uh, it's hard to go guns blazing. Mm-hmm. So the stealth aspect is is brilliant. Uh, once you get your hunting knife, which is no spoiler because that comes after your first half hour of play, you you get some of your stuff back. Uh, and, and you get the choice between, like in um, Splinter Cell, you can go lethal or non-lethal. Yeah. Go lethal, man. It is fucking brutal. The way that he puts down these cats is so cool. Uh, the brutal takedown. So if you go in your box on and then hold your circle button in when they're slightly stunned or off balance and you um, hit the quick time event in the right spot, release the circle at the right time, you can stab a dude in the face with this 12-inch blade half a dozen times. Yeah, oh, I, I, I don't play these types of games to be friendly to people. Nah, either do I. And the cool thing is, you know, Splinter Cell used to be able to hit L1, hit square, and go between lethal and lethal and uh, non-lethal? Yeah. You actually have to go press start and go into the menu and change it in, in the menu, so it's not on the fly. So you have to make a conscience decision to be a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll be stabbing people in the face. That's what I like to do in these kinds of games, because you can't do it in real life and still <laughs> keep playing video games. You could do it. You could probably do it a couple of times before you'd end up in jail or dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the context of the of the racism and the um, the times and everything like that is only mirrored by how brutal the game is as well. You know, you don't have any of your your big ass weapons. You can get them later on, and everything like that. But you're running around with with Tommy with a Tommy well, a trench gun. You're going to put a barrel on to make it a Tommy gun. Uh, your handguns, your single shot um, rifles, or your uh, very early submachine guns, and it's really cool. Uh, you make money, you take over rackets, you assign it to your underbosses, you're working your way up because of a betrayal in the family. Oh, pff, brilliant game. I cannot speak highly enough of it. I'll probably put almost 30 hours in now. So that's. And then Gears of War come out, you bastard. 
<laughs> and I kind of just haven't touched Mafia in three days. But yeah, that that's my game talk. I know it took up a lot of time, but that is that's brilliant. I can't. I can highly recommend everything I've played lately. Yeah, nice. All right, well, uh, I'll run through mine. Nice. Uh, first one on the list I've got, we've already chatted about, Gears of War 4, so we'll um, skip on past that. Next one, Resident Evil Remaster, which is one of the PlayStation Plus games. Oh, I've, too. I've, uh, I've put more time into that than I ever did as a kid, and I put it down to the fact that like, I can understand the puzzles a little bit more and what to do. I, was, I think I was a little bit confused when I was younger, because when, when did the PlayStation come out? 20 years ago. 21 years ago. Well, that's right. So I would have been 13, maybe. Um, well, 12 or 13 years old playing... Uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Resident, Resident Evil. I didn't really... I couldn't work anything out. And plus, it was really slow-paced, too. Like, with the tank controls and and all that sort of stuff. It was. I never really got very far. So I, I played it for a couple of hours the other night and got further than I ever had. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> The thing that I noticed, uh, that it wasn't a complete overhaul, like they did do a complete overhaul, but they changed a lot of things, like the uh, Jill Sandwich thing, do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, there was a scene where you you walk into a, like a little room, push a button or something, and the roof starts coming down to squash you, and uh, Barry turns up at the last moment and pulls you out, spoiler alert, and... The original line was something along the lines was, you were almost a Jill sandwich, which was really cheesy. It was terrible, but I loved it. It's so cheesy, it's iconic now. That's right. In in the remaster, the lines changed a little bit. Still cheesy, but not as bad. Where he says, well, any longer in there and you would have been thin enough to fit on a sandwich. Oh, okay. No. Jill Sandwich is too iconic to replace. Yeah, but they changed it. There's no, it doesn't say Jill Sandwich anymore. Bastards. So that, that sort of thing. And so the, the dialogue is still the same, but they've just changed the wording up a little bit, the things that I've noticed. Like the, there was, in the original, there was like some real stupid things where they would constantly just walk up to things, whereas a puddle of blood on the ground, and Barry would say, What is this? It's yeah. a fucking puddle of blood, you dickhead. What do you mean, what is this? You know? And I look at things that are obvious and goes, What is that? That what do you mean? It fucking is what it is. It's it's silly stuff. They've sort of gotten rid of that dopey sort of um voice acting there. But uh enjoyed it. It doesn't have tank controls anymore. You can control around just using the left thumbstick. Uh I played it on the easier setting because I just wanted to give it a go. And yeah. I found myself hooked and played it a lot more than I, I, I intended on. Um, yeah. The, the the most irritating thing about it is the inventory is very limited. Yeah, it's a bit gay. On, on the easier setting, I think I've got eight slots. But you run out of slots to the point where you can't even pick up, like, quest items unless you drop things. And you can't drop things. It's impossible to drop things out of your inventory. The only way to get a free slot is to either use a herb, which is like a health item, which is a waste if you've got full health, or go back to a save point where there's a storage chest and put them away. I mean, it's an element to the game. It was there in the original, so it's good, but it's still annoying. It's like, fuck, I need to pick up this key so I can go into the room, but I've got no free spaces. I've got to go back to a save point and swap it out, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, I don't know what to get rid of. Yeah. But anyway, I enjoyed it. It's a, it's a good remaster. Uh, move on. Another PlayStation Plus title that I tried was Transformers Devastation. Have you tried that yet? No, but I have downloaded it. That's a really good game, man. That's yep. th- that's two fantastic games from PS Plus for the month. Transformers Devastation is is great. It's very uh, very much like the original eighties cartoon. The way it looks, you've oh, got Gen One. Yeah, you've got the good voice voices. You've definitely got uh, Optimus Prime in there, whatever his name is, the old bloke doing the voiceover. And uh, it's a good action game. It's fun to, to transform. The combat is really good as well with uh, the different takedowns you got to do and you got to break uh, defenses before you can fight and stuff like that. And there's cool combos that you can do using 
your transformed form. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a little bit of uh, like loot drops as well. Like you'll pick up weapons that you can equip after the the round or the level, so to speak. So it's um, oh wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like there's chests, loot chests that you can find, and you open them up and you'll get something that you can equip later. You can choose different um, Autobots that you want to uh, play with. I don't, I'm not sure if you get to play as the um, Decepticons yet. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a real good game for free. If you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, get it, because it's good. Uh, but I only played a little bit of that. Uh, next up, Outlast Demo. Did, did I think you... Were you left? Had you left when I played that? Or were you here? Yes, thank fuck. Yeah, okay, it must have been Reprimere that I was um, playing that alongside of. Yeah, that's fucking scary as fuck. You're um, uh, trying to escape... And you end up running through a cornfield at night, and there's like all these dudes looking for you with torch, uh, torches and stuff. And um, yeah, I I successfully died a few times, but I did after just running and scurrying and shitting myself. I managed to find which way to run and got out and finished the demo. So it's a scary demo. It's uh, it's yeah, it's taken the hillbilly up. approach as opposed to the yeah. mental hospital, hasn't it? Yeah, it is a bit like that. Yeah, fucking nutter hillbillies out in a sort of bumfuck Idaho nowhere. Um, we, I, I played Project Cars in the Age 400. I got a practice... <laughs> yes, a practice, did. Yeah, a practice race. That was with Roy and Snoogans. I got a practice race and race one out of the way before I accidentally deleted the game. Oh, just like Rocket League. Y- yes, because the game crashed. So I went back to the dashboard and just... I don't know why... And I'm not the only one that's done it, because you've done it too. But in- instinctively went to delete game and said yes, instead of close application and yes. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, it's, called it again. Brain, it's called a brain fart. Yeah, had a mad fucking brain shart is what I did. <laughs> but yeah, so I was out for the rest of it. But uh, it didn't look like I was going to be very competitive anyway, because Snoogans and Roy Boy are pretty good. Yes. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 beta. I played that, uh, you did that too, you forgot about that one. Ah, yes. Uh, Good game. Yes. I didn't play the first one, but playing the beta, I can say that's a brilliant game, but it'll never be something that I get into, because I'm not a Dragon Ball fan. But I could imagine Dragon Ball Z fans fucking loving the shit out of that game. It's, It's decent, isn't it? Yeah, graphically and speed and just how they it, it's not just your round one fight side by side Street Fighter Tekken clone mm. you can go 360 yeah open world sort of semi open world uh, fighting arena yeah yeah no no that's that's a good game but uh, the beta uh, has just happened and the, I think there's an is there an open one coming absolutely yeah so 18th, the, 18th I think yeah, so look out. If, you, if you're if you keen on that, there's an open one coming, which should just be a download on the store. I don't think there'll be codes or anything like that. Um, uh, playing Forza Horizon 3, played that a little bit more with Snoogans, did a little bit of the co-op, um, and a few of the, the blueprint challenges where you can challenge your mates to, to do certain things, like jumps and drifts and all that sort of stuff. It's good. It's uh, I think it's major downfall for me is every other game that's being released at the moment <laughs> yep yeah but I'll, I'll come back to that it's, it's a very good game to play for, for rev heads petrol heads and uh, being set in Australia it uh, should go well here Clash Royale I mentioned that already alright now let's move on to the big one PlayStation VR Midnight Launch happened for us not last night the night before and uh, Snoogans and Roy Boy, considering they're our Sydneyites, uh, came came with myself, and we went into our local EB Games. It was funny. the uh, The midnight launch started at ten PM, so we rocked yeah. up at about ten thirty. I think we'll get in line, pay for it, then maybe go get a coffee and come back at midnight. We got there, and there was like nobody in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> There was, like, I didn't really count, but just I would estimate from the activity that I saw in a store, there was probably about six employees. Oh, wow. And I've walked in, and I saw the guy that I spoke to on the previous day, 
uh, when I was in there doing something, I don't know. And I walked up to him and said, where do I line up? <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, yeah, come over, we'll fix you up. So I went across and paid my remaining money on the, the PlayStation VR. And I'm like, it's 10.30. What am I going to do for it? Like, I thought I'd have been at line, line for a bit, but there was nothing. And uh, so we went and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you missed out, Red. But we went to Krispy Kremes and got donuts and coffee. Oh. And guess who we saw at Krispy Kremes? Just guess. One guess. Oh, um, I don't know. Um, think about it. It's a donut place. Police. <laughs> we saw a fucking ton of police. Oh wow! Yes. <laughs> I didn't want to be disrespectful to the boys in blue. <laughs> and we went in and we're ordering our coffees and that. And they're like, oh, we're closing up. So when you get your order, can you go out that door? <laughs> fucking feel oh. it. Thanks for yeah, making right, us yeah. feel welcome. Do you want to take my order before you fucking kick me out? But anyway, we went outside and we sat down, like just sat down on the outside tables. We didn't fucking kick the police out. Uh, nah, of course not. Mm. They'd love having the cops there. Yeah, well, they're paying, keeping the electricity bill like paid for, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we got our coffees and we sat down. We're chatting for a while. We went back at uh, about twenty to twenty to twelve or whatever, and there's still no one there. There's about not, not by no one. I mean, not many. There was probably five people. Wow. Because out, out of Snoogans, Roy and I, I was the only one picking one up. They didn't have theirs for that night. But I reckon the the uh, the staff outnumbered purchases <laughs> yeah you know. yeah but five people that's three to five grand yeah, well yeah it, it is a lot of money still but um i don't know if it was necessarily to do do a, a midnight launch i mean they're, they're not, probably not that you're complaining no absolutely not absolutely not i'm glad they did well it did make me stay up till 5 30 in the morning being batman Oh, made you did it. Yeah, yeah. Cause... It's like a prick of a thing. I oh, know. I love it. Give it, it but... give it to Red. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we got it home and uh, we set it up and we all had a, a bit of a play on it. And my wife even got in on it. it. It's something that she doesn't ever, ever even touch. Even when I've got a new game, she might watch it, but she's never going to play it. But she even got in on it and, and, and played it a bit and she loves it. She's like, I want to do more of that. Can I do more of that? I'm like yeah, 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 we'll get we'll get it set up and play it. And uh, last night we uh, after because on at midnight it, it sort of didn't nothing really clicked over properly. So later in on the the on the thirteenth, uh, some more things popped up that were obviously waiting to be released. And one of those things was the uh, uh, Resident Evil Seven Kitchen VR demo. Yeah. Shit, man. There's a video up on the Facebook page and YouTube channel of myself and my wife having a go. That is genuine fear. Yes, I've seen it. <laughs> that, because there's this like part where you get stabbed in the leg and she puts the, the machete in your face. The way yeah. I felt when I played, when I was playing that, I think would be very, very similar to if that happened in real life. I was yeah. <laughs> feeling fear. I just remember, ah, fuck me leg, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and did I you, think did that's... You, did you feel yourself getting stabbed? No, obviously no. There's no. It doesn't play with your mind that much. But no, it... no, no, no. But did you did did there any senses go off in your knee? I didn't mean like literally. Do you feel like you're getting stabbed? But do you? No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But no, no, there was nothing oh. like that. It was just numb. Like you're like, oh, it kind of like your leg was numb because you think I should have felt that, but I didn't. You think, oh, my leg's and, numb. And then there was relief. Whew. But... <laughs> But I think that's how I react in situations like that. I make jokes. Like, there's been a couple of times where, where it's not life-threatening, but I've been in hospital, right, with, uh, I think I had uh, my appendix. I make jokes, and I make light of situations when I'm scared. To cope with them, yeah. Yeah, like a coping mechanism. And that's what I was doing last night. Like, when she was holding the, the machete in my face, the, the scary bitch... I was making jokes, as in I was putting my hand up saying, are you going to cut me free? <laughs> and 
that's that's the that's genuine fear man and when you've got the vr on even at the title screen before it started you could look around you actually feel like you're inside that room yeah and i think if you want to add and it probably won't cost you anything but if you want to add sort of uh, elements to vr you could probably do it quite easily depending on the game you're playing like if you're um doing something where there's a lot of speed you can put like a fan on just to feel breeze. I reckon that oh. would add a million fold to it, but you could do, do those sorts of things, you know. But in playing that, I actually felt like because the whole demo it, you just strapped it to a chair, right? So you can't move. I actually felt like I was strapped to that chair in a dirty, disgusting, dank room, and the 3D sound made me hear things from behind me, so I'd turn around and look. And uh, there was like a wall where some of the action goes on behind it. You can't see. So I was sort of leaning across trying to see. And you can lean across. You can't lean across enough to see anything the way it's designed. But you, you've got that sense of, oh, I want to see behind me what's going on. It's in your face. It's scary. It is genuine fear. I hate it so much that I love it and want more. It's amazing. Absolutely you can amazing. You fucking have it. <laughs> yeah. But there's something I've got to say about PlayStation VR and its games. Now, I played uh, also Arkham VR, so I could be the Batman. And for yes. the majority of that, it looked fantastic. It was nice and clear and looked great. But there was a lot of things in it that were blurry. And I tried so much adjusting things, squinting my eyes, moving it around. I couldn't get it to clear up. And I thought, mm, maybe this PlayStation VR thing's not as tuned as it should be. And, you know, I was a little bit disheartened by that. Because you could pick up Batman statues and you could look at them. And they looked fantastic, but they were blurry. Because I was holding them up to my face to look at and I couldn't see them properly. And that annoyed me. But in playing games like Eve Valkyrie, Riggs... Uh, the Resident Evil 7 kitchen demo, there's no issues with anything blurring. So I put it down to the game's fault, not VR's. So the developers obviously have, I don't know, I, I'm assuming this, the developers have fucked something up in Batman where the, it doesn't focus properly. Uh, so that's that's a plus for VR, but not necessarily for some of the games. Drive Club VR as well. Whereas the, I don't know if they've gone for this effect on purpose, but I want them to change focus depending on where I'm looking. Yeah, so when and I'm that's not that's not much to ask either because cameras no. do it. Yeah, when I was like I could when I was playing Drive Club VR, I could see the road ahead clearly and the other cars, but when I looked down to see the speedo, it was blurry. I couldn't. I can't. I can't read the speed I'm doing. I can't read any of the dials in front of the steering wheel. I would understand yeah. if it blurred while I was looking at the windscreen, but I want it to focus when I'm looking down because I want to know the speed I'm doing. Uh, and I thought as well, because it was one of the first VR games I played, thinking, oh, maybe the headset's not that great. But then, like I said, with the games like Resident Evil 7, uh, London, London Heist, uh, Riggs, Eve Valkyrie, I didn't have any of that. They, they were clear, as crystal clear, beautiful. Yeah, rigs, rigs look really good. Yeah, it does. And you get a, a good sense of being 20 foot tall or whatever you are. You do, don't you? You feel <laughs> up high, you feel massive. And when you fling up into the air, you feel like you've got height. And a little bit of that fear of heights that I have kicks in and you're like, whoa! I oh, get vertigo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's there's a lot of good things to come. See, what I would like, obviously, there's not a lot that you can do with VR, like as in moving around, because you're tethered and all that sort of stuff with the wires. But with a game like Resident Evil 7, if you played most of the game like you do just in the, the, the beginning hour, but then obviously having cutscenes playable, if you will, like if you're... Like the 
the kitchen demo when you're tethered to a chair, if that was kind of like a plot, a cut scene that you you could experience, that would be great. I would love them littered throughout the game. Obviously, you can't really have a whole game like that because you just sit yeah. in one spot and it would get boring. But if there are five, six, seven experiences like that throughout the normal gameplay in VR, oh, I'm 100% sold. Love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. So Resident Evil, I think Brownie was saying, Brendan Brownie Brown was saying that that's his most anticipated game. Now that I've played the Kitchen VR demo, same for me. I really cannot wait for that in January. I think it's January 24 that it comes out. Might You're be a bunch off. of fucking nutters. Yeah, I just love what I hate about it. It's just... Oh, about, that's what VR yeah. is, though. Yeah. It's got to suck you in. And it does that. It does that perfectly. Oh, I have not... I, I did question my purchase a little bit when I saw those blurry shit. But now that I've played a few games that have nailed it, I know that it's possible it'll get better. And hopefully yeah. updates might fix those things in those games that I was talking about. But that's been my initial experience with it. And my wife is loving it too. She's giving it a go. Sucked into my daughter. She was a naughty little shit and she got banned from it yesterday and she hasn't tried it yet. Oh, I'd keep finding excuses to ban the kids. <laughs> well, mind you, mind you, there are warnings everywhere saying you must be 12 years old to play Oh, VR. yeah, of course. She's not 12 years old. I'm happy to give her a quick go. She's not going to play it all the time. I will give her a go. Give but... her a go at Resident Evil 7. She'll never <laughs> want to play it again. <laughs> she was not, man. No, I couldn't do that. As much as it would be funny. At <laughs> <laughs> least admitting that fact. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. I could not do that to her. Not to a child, no. Nah, it... no way. I don't do it to me set well. You guys do it to me at the expo, and that's not even in VR. Yeah, but no, I'll let her play the the underwater experience. Not the one with the shark. There's just one that just literally goes underwater, and you just see oh, the fish yeah. and stuff like that. And there's also uh, like a little cinema app, which you can go into and watch 360-degree videos. Yep. And uh, like documentaries and stuff like that. Hopefully they integrate... Uh, the 360 videos that are compatible with YouTube. Hopefully that gets VR compatibility as well. That's something I want to test out. But yeah, there's there's a fair bit to do on launch, and there's a fair few uh, really good priced games. You know, there's Eve Valkyrie, which is like $85. Yeah. There's another one called Eve Gunjack, which I think we'll talk about probably in the in the news. You've got the full lineup. Yep. Um, but that's like 12 bucks or whatever it is at the moment. So, mm. Yeah, some really good affordable stuff. Do you have any questions about VR, Ed? Uh, well, it's funny you should say that. I don't have questions. I have more of a relayed statement, if that makes sense. Um, Weeksy, I was talking to him last night on the phone after he had dinner with his parents, and um, he said the, he had a suggestion for something I could bring up while talking about VR in the in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I won't repeat it exactly how he put it, but as you and I both know, Weeksy wears his heart in his sleeve, and mm-hmm. if Weeksy's wrong... Or Weeksy's not wrong. If it's wrong to Weeksy, it's wrong everywhere. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, spelling of certain very, words. Yeah, he's very uh, passionate. And we love that about him. I'm not taking that away from him. But he thinks, and I'd like your opinion, he thinks that the PSVR should have its own section on the PlayStation Store. He's sick of fucking going to the fucking store and fucking looking for a fucking new game and seeing fucking new game and go, oh, wow, yeah, okay, and having a look at it, and it's for the PSVR. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's me too. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, but I also think, and I know that this won't happen because they want to advertise shit, there needs to be a separate section for pre-order. I'm fucking sick of scrolling four pages just to get oh, to the games get that I can games. actually buy. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm with Weeksy on that one, 100%. I, th- I think it should be because uh, when I go to choose... Like if I like the other day, I wanted to have a look. You can go to a section that only shows VR games, but yeah, it can be frustrating for people that don't have VR that have to sift through that shit. Yeah, well, it's just had thirty odd titles added. Yeah. So, depending on how many of those are digital, and they're very, these days everything's digital. So, there's another two pages you have to scroll through before you actually hit the the PS4 games. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame him for having that that opinion because I think that of pre order games. Yeah, I like to see pre-order games and all that sort of stuff, but when there's that many of them, or, like, have have your store, which has everything, 
but then give us a specific, like um, a, another uh, thing that you can filter that just shows yeah. released games. Yeah, just released games, just pre-order games, just VR games, digital only, and PlayStation Plus specials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it just needs a little bit. Of... Mind you, if you've seen the US stores, the Australian stores much better. Oh, the US store's messy. Yeah, like if you want to go and just see um, every game, you can't. No, I think I think I think your your um, quick fix would be the way to go. Uh, a, a filter. filter, a filter. Yeah, just the just, just just to have an all game section where absolutely everything's in chronological order of release date and pending release date. Yeah, and then and then you can filter from there. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Because at the moment, I think you can only filter A to Z, Z to A, newest release, oldest High to low release. price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't actually get rid of uh, pre-order stuff and VR stuff. So that'd be something that people would appreciate. But I, I think they want it in your face. That's the problem. Of course they do. Um, everything at the moment is very tempting for me to go, oh, well, if I put a pre-order on and I paid 20, 30 bucks off a month, you know, it'd take me a little while, but I'd get one. But that's so many games in this such game-rich season we're in now that it, it 12 months away minimum for for me. Yeah, fair enough. And even, and even then, I'll be looking at the Scorpio. Yes, yeah, fair enough. All right, look, let's uh, let's quickly tidy this up and before we go into news, but uh, there was something I wanted to mention. Rocket League, played some Rocket League one-on-one with uh, Roy Boy. Did you win? Smashed him. Good boy. <laughs> I said, look, he, he keeps asking me, give me your um, your PlayStation VR. I said, beat me in 1v1 one, one, one one Rocket League. <laughs> he goes, nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you lose... You want his unit as well, so you can play to play with your wife. <laughs> that would be nice, but it's not compatible. Would you tell her to go get her own PlayStation? Oh yeah, yeah. We could put another PlayStation in another room. You can do that in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Uh, and Pokemon, Pokemon Go. I've been playing a little bit of that. I got okay. new news. Remember how I told you I was? What are you laughing at? I've caught one Pokemon since being home. <laughs> yeah, it's different. In Tassie. But you know how I said to you I've been burnt because of I've always had one more scene that I've caught? Oh, you've got it! Oh, you evolved it. No, no, I don't have it yet. No, no, no. Oh. It's completely fucked now. Because if you go to a gym and there are Pokemon... So you click on a gym oh, and there are no. Pokemon in that gym that you haven't seen before, you've now seen it. Oh, no. So now I've seen like 95 and caught 80, 89 or something. Oh, OCD. Yeah. But the annoying thing is, is it doesn't add it to your Pokedex. It just adds the number and gives you yeah. the outline instead yeah. of nothing. Yeah. So you don't actually see the Pokemon. It's just out the grade outline is there. I think it should just add it to your Pokedex. Yeah, uh, I suppose you got to catch it in order to have any information on it. Yeah, that's fair. But at least if you've seen it, you know what it fucking looks like. Show me well, the you can have the picture there, but just have yeah. no information. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I'm down with that. Yeah. But anyway, that's how it is. That's a, an update. There's another update coming soon too, or if it hasn't already, which is has something to do with Trading. gyms as well. Um, oh, I'll try to remember what it is. No, but if you fight your own gym, fight friendly gyms, you're going to get prizes. I don't know what, maybe candies or something. I don't know. There's something like that coming. Maybe in the future we'll have it on another show. Uh, but that's it. That's it for my video game discussion, Red. Uh, can we go on to video game news? Yeah, let's breeze through this. Yeah, we'll breeze through it. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> Right, uh, first up in the news, members of Lizard Squad arrested. This is good news. I'm always happy to hear when these fuckwits have uh, put to justice because they're a pain in the ass. If only we had a real-life Dexter that could take care of baddies like this. <laughs> but two teenagers belonging to the hacker group Lizard Squad, which was responsible for the downtime suffered by both Xbox Live and PlayStation Network late in 2014, were charged with cyber crimes this week. Good stuff. Oh, really? Yes. 19-year-olds Zachary Bukda of Falston and Bradley Jean Willem Van Roy of Leiden 
um, this is in the Netherlands, were yeah. charged in Chicago with conspiring to cause damage to protected computers. The charge carries a 10-year maximum sentence in prison. I would probably say it's unlikely they're going to get 10 years. I'd like to see oh, them do a couple. At least one or two, yeah. Yeah, one or two, I think, is a good enough smack in the face for these little shits, depending on how they work with sentencing, depending on how much damage and uh, loss of currency that the the companies suffered. Maybe it might be... Well, that, that, there's up. millions of dollars, potentially, if you take the, the price of PS Plus and Live. I know it's uh, so $10 a month, that's 30 cents a day. You take that from 100 people, there's uh, 30 bucks. So yeah. you take it from a thousand people, there's three hundred, and look how many millions they cut off. So people go get put away in jail for stealing five, six hundred dollars from a, a corner store. If you went in there and held them up and robbed them, you can you know you get ten years for armed robbery. I know yeah. this is not armed, but well, that's you, the thing. The, the only, the, the only the, aspect, but the loss. Yeah, the only difference is the the fear aspect. It's just done online, but. Uh, they were eventually uh, brought down after an investigation into a website that allowed people to pay to have people harass, harassed via uh, constant phone calls. So these fucking idiots made a website where you could go in, pay money, and they will harass someone for you. Yeah, yeah there's, uh, I've come across a couple of websites where you can pay people to DDoS for you. Yeah, but th yeah, this is similar to DDoSing, but it's just making phone calls like, 10 phone calls a day to someone that you hate or whatever. Fucking dumb, man. Just get a life and go and live your own life. Don't try to fuck someone else's up. <laughs> They've taken the troll to the next level. Yeah, that's right. It's fucking dumb. But anyway, there, there's two two of them are, have been charged now. That's Good. Stuff. I hope they... I fucking give them two, three, four years. Are they going to be sentenced and jailed in America? They will be, yeah. Even better. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> You sadistic prick. Go with your news, Red. <laughs> All right, so I'll quickly run through. Um, I, I don't know if there's a little bit of controversy here. Uh, was there ever, do you ever recall an advertisement for the initial lineup of VR games will be 50 plus? Oh, I can't remember. I, I believe that was it. I'm not going to make the bold claim and say that was exactly it, but I, th I think the advertisement scheme was 50 plus launch day titles. Lies! There's 33. No, oh, okay. Uh, and I'll quickly run through the ones that are currently out right now, um, because if you want to stop, pause, and search, if you're new to VR and you have it, you can. There's not a whole lot of information on each of them, but here's what you will need to search if you're looking for new games on VR. You have 100 Foot Robot, Ace Banana, Battle Zone, Batman Arkham, Bound, Drive Club VR, Eve Gunjack and Eve Valkyrie, like you, you spoke of. Yep. Harmonix have a game called Harmonix Music VR, which would be pretty that. cool to check out. I had a look at the trailer to that, and it's like fucking off your head drug trip. No, thank you. Hatsune Miku by Sega Headmaster. Here they are. Hustle Kings VR Job Simulator. Oh, I'm going to come home from an eight-hour day to sit down and go back to fucking work. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Uh, keep talking and nobody explodes. Yes. Let's see. How That's cool a, would that be? Because I've seen your videos on that. That's a good game. Uh, Loading Human, Sports Bar VR, Stardust, or oh, Super Stardust VR, that'd be trippy as. Uh, PlayStation VR Worlds, Resident Evil 6, 7, Kitchen Demo, which is not really a game. Uh, Res Infinite, Riggs Mechanized Combat League. Now, that's wicked. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, I don't know if that should be on this list because isn't that just one level? It's just yeah, a bit of DLC for it. It's VR. Mm. Yeah. Still VR content, though. Yes, absolutely. Super, Hyper, Super Hypercube, The Assembly, The Playroom VR, Thumper, Tumble VR, Until Dawn Rush of Blood DLC, Standalone DLC, uh, Volume Coder, Wayward Sky, World War Tombs, and Waddle Home. Yeah, are the games that you want to search up if you want to check them out. And I've just got one quick one here that for you that you might be interested. I know you're not a Trekkie Trekkie, but November 29, that uh, bridge crew, Star Trek bridge crew from Ubisoft comes out for the the PlayStation VR because I thought that was going to be PS exclusive for ages. Yeah, Roy will be into that. Speaking of exclusives, Batman and... 
Resident Evil 7, uh, only timed exclusive on the PlayStation. Yeah. They'll be going to PC. That first one that you mentioned is um, 100 Foot Robot Golf, I think it is, isn't it? Golf, yep. It is. Good call. Yeah. Looks Bit. stupid. Looks <laughs> stupid. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Wonderful. Uh, next up in the news, Steam will soon natively support PlayStation 4 controllers. So you can already plug your DualShock 4 into a PC or connect it via Bluetooth uh, and play your Steam games. However, this is all through third-party applications and not Steam or Sony, Sony themselves. This is going to change soon uh, after Jeff Bellinghausen announced that they were beginning to work on native support for other controllers and starting with the DualShock 4 which is going to be good because you can use your DualShock 4 to play Steam games now, but if it's a controller-supported game, it's still going to bring up prompts of X, B, Y, and A. Mm -hmm. Whereas, hopefully, if this is implemented, the software will recognize um, X, square, circle, triangle. Yeah. Stuff like that. And press press options instead of press start or select or, or I don't know, maybe... But, uh, yeah, so th- it's going to be natively um, supported very soon. Not yet, but very soon. Well, look, that's cool. Because um, at the moment, we can, af- well, particularly um, myself and people in my situation, if you can only afford one console, but you still happen to pick up a, a laptop or a computer, it's always cool to know that the PlayStation players can now get 100% support for their DualShock 4. Like, as you said, I had to download a third-party program, a server program, plug it in, uh, sync it up with this program, and then have the program running in the background while I used it via yeah. Steam and everything like that. All well and good. Though, if something happened, and you know how sometimes a, a program will stop responding for one second, but mm. then it'll reload itself back up? Yeah. If this program didn't respond for a split second... It closed the program down. So then there's a pause, alt tab, open program, resync controller, turn the controller on, go back to the computer and play again. And sometimes even with a dicky USB, you touch it and it'll shut the fucking program down and be like, oh, Jesus Christ, this yeah. isn't worth the fucking hassle of playing for half an hour, you it's know? It's annoying. But you, you know what I find interesting is that Sony brought out the wireless dongle for the PC, but they didn't bring it out with support <laughs> for the controller. Yeah, oh, this must have been in the works then, surely. But, but yeah, but why wouldn't they delay the, the dongle if it doesn't natively well, the, support? Yeah, because now you've got the perfect platform for PR, haven't you? you you got yeah, a reason well, to sell the dongle. Yeah, it's just strange that it didn't come out at the same time. But anyway, what's next, Red? Infinite Warfare. Well, more, more to the point, Modern Warfare Remaster, which looks really really cool mm. a lot of uh, video has been emerging now because obviously you can play the campaign on the ps4 now yep uh the big the big headline last week was the 130 gig it was going to take up on your hard drive no she's a big one and, ju- and just comparatively battlefield one will take up 45.3 but that battlefield one's only one game yes Whereas Boy, that 130 is both Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare, right? Yeah, but you'd have to think that Modern Warfare Remaster would be no bit bigger than a Battlefield 1 game. Yeah, true. Well, it's so that, that making, so... making Infinite Warfare 80 gig. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, good point. It is still huge even if you do split them up. <laughs> <sighs> but the thing is, they would come out and uh, probably about a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, yay. They, there was news leaking out that you didn't, that they were going to release the Modern Warfare remaster on its own. Yeah. And so a single purchase, a, a, a separate purchase. So that's, oh, well, yeah, that's cool. Because um, if you like me, look, I, I don't have it pre-ordered. I have no intentions of picking it up day one, Infinite Warfare this is. Uh, I'm, I'm dead set more interested in Modern Warfare. Yeah, but, I'm not, but I'm not going to pay $130 or $140 for Modern Warfare. Hmm. Um, but now there's been a, a complete backflip. And obviously I'm not talking digital here because that's you got digital license and ownership there. But... You will not be able to play, this is in, this is from Activision itself, you will not be able to play Modern Warfare Remastered without the Infinite Warfare disc. 
So you can buy it separately. So if you've bought the pleb pack, which doesn't come with it, you can buy it later, but you still need the disc. Is that what you're saying? No, no. The remaster is only available via the exp the expensive Legacy, Legacy Pro or Digital yeah. Deluxe. Yeah. yeah. So even if you've got the pleb day one or the pleb edition, $69 target edition, you can't buy from everything I've read. I might flip on it. You can't go and purchase um, the re remaster separately. Oh, Full so stop. It's, so you it's have not... to buy the the big edition. It's, but didn't wasn't there an announcement? I don't know if it was an announcement or just leaked news that it was eventually going to be purchased separately. Well, that was a couple of weeks ago. That's exactly what I'm talking about now. But there seems to be a but flip. You're on saying it. they flipped on it, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely flipped on it. There's no way you're going to be able to play. If you buy it physically, you ha you won't be able to trade in your disc and then be able to play Modern Warfare. Mm, okay, that sucks. Why are it they does. doing this? Hey? Why are they doing this? They're just... Oh. They're just uh, I, I don't know. I can, I can speculate as a fanboy or an anti-fanboy that they want to maintain their upper echelon of sales and profit that they've been able to keep for... What the last ten gen, uh, the last ten years of first-person shooters, because I, I th think Battlefield has really scared them this year. Mm. I, I'm I still... buying Battlefield instead of COD. No, I'm not. But I don't, I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, but, but but you're not the biggest multiplayer game fan around. No, and I've always where I where I buy campaigns. COD or Battlefield for the multiplayer. Yeah. Where you buy it for the story, where the infinite warfare story being a sci-fi futuristic thing that really suits your your niche first-person shooter genre, mm. where Battlefield One's multiplayer boots to the ground, no jetpacks and everything suits my multiplayer. Right. So, yeah, there's always going to be those those two different things there. But you have to admit the long our likes aside, the longevity of a first-person shooter in today's day and age is its multiplayer. Yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> so you you buy you buy say the Legacy Pro Edition or even the Digital Deluxe Edition, one hundred and forty dollars, and you get the season pass of sixty nine dollars. Call of Duty this year is going to cost you if you want the remaster two hundred and ten, two hundred and twenty bucks. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's almost half your VR. Mm, yeah. And half your hard drive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So yeah, make your decision carefully, people. If you uh, if you are a bloody person that trades in on the on a whim, maybe you should get digital and download it for three weeks. There you go. Mm. All right. Uh, next up in the news, PlayStation VR again in the news. Ooh. Go figure. Uh, sold out. It's probably not that <laughs> amazing to understand that. But PlayStation VR launched this week. It's no su no surprise there in Australia and the rest of the world. But it's well known. Uh, it's it, sorry. It's a well known fact, especially known by our uh, Roy boy, that <laughs> every unit in the country is accounted for. All units for launch day were sold out prior to release, and now the second shipment it is also sold out. So if uh, if you move your ass now, you might be able to get in for the third shipment, which is due out in September. Oh, sorry, September, in December. Uh, one thing that I'm interested in knowing, is I haven't seen any stats, I've looked for it, but I haven't seen anything. Is it a big seller, or are there just not very many units? Uh, you probably had a lot of people sceptical like me, and and that would have to be taking, marketing would have had to have taken that into consideration. Yeah. There probably is fuck all units because the demand, considering it's the price of a console, but there's not the demand of the console, if you yeah. know what I mean. Like, obviously, uh, EB, your EBs and your Harvey Normans would have got three, four, five hundred PS4s and Xbox Ones in on day one because there is that yeah. immediate demand. Yep. Um, the PSVR, because it's still speculation, there's still uh, a handful of games and demos that. They're probably filtering it out like this as well. So if there is something bad, like you said, the blurry, they've still got shit to work on. There's going to, going to be less poison reviews and they've got 
now got themselves a three month, four month gap in time with different shipments. Let's say they put them three weeks, four weeks apart, shipment one, shipment two, shipment three, that the, all these um, things are going to be able to be fixed. There's going to be more titles released. And it's uh, by the time that they hit their, where they envision them themselves to be with the release of a new pe- a peripheral like this, that there's going to be a lot more, um, it's going to be a lot smoother and a, lo- a bigger library. So I think it's very smart marketing. Yeah, I, I think so too. And uh, look, you know, I, I, you might want to say that oh, I'm lucky I I got my no. hands on one, but which <laughs> Roy boy sour as all fuck because he hasn't got one. But I'm not lucky. I pre-ordered not this luck. the day that it was announced. Luck's got nothing to do. I pre-ordered the PS4 the day it was announced when it was still a nine 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 placeholder price. And you got one. And I fucking got one. Yeah. So that's the thing. I, I um. Was at work when the news dropped. I called my wife and said, "Can you drop into J uh, to EB for fifty, 50 bucks, bucks down, down on the VR yep. for me?" Because uh, I, I I thought I wanted one, and I thought, well, if I don't want one, I can cancel. Well, just cancel. Money back. <laughs> yeah, there was no no love lost. So if something comes out and it's like a year away, and you think you might be interested in getting it when it comes out, put a pre order down. You don't yep, need you. Don't, that- and if you don't want it, you can cancel it, and someone else will have it. Yep. It'll just bump someone else up in the line. You won't miss out. So that's what I did, and I got a day one one. I was guaranteed yep. it. So yep. I'm not lucky. Same as same as same as with my PlayStation, mate. I was guaranteed a day one one, and yeah, first day I heard about it, fifty bucks straight down because that's the minimum they take on a major purchase. It is, yeah. So, so yeah, no, you're not lucky. Smart. You just, Smart. smart. <laughs> Not saying Roy's dumb, but He's yeah, dumb. you how do you put the pre order <laughs> down? Because he, he fell in love with it once using it. You were able we were able to see it the year before at the EB Expo, so we knew it wasn't this um unicorn. Yeah. So we knew it existed and we'd seen it and we'd seen what people were doing. I, you even got a hands on, oh, didn't I you? I played it. Yeah, I played 12 it. months ago. Yeah. But this year there were all those titles to play and there were uh, a variety of genres and the announcement of Call of Duty and Tomb Raider and uh, Until Dawn DLCs and one-offs and levels and updates and DLCs, uh, Rogue One or whatever it is for the Battlefront coming uh, later in December. Um, there's so much more potential now for it. So mm. that's why people are now going, oh, wow, well, I can't get me bloody VR. I want one, I want one, I want one. Because what well, they should have showed faith when you did. But the funny story that I just thought of um, is a video I saw on the internet uh, of a, a snooker champion, and yep. he was he was playing on a VR, and I'm not sure if it was PlayStation VR or not, but he was playing snooker in VR, and he fell oh. over because he leant on the table. <laughs> 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 it's fucking funny, but that's a testament to how realistic it makes you think. Because yeah, he's he's gone to lean on the table like you would playing pool to to take your shot. He's just fallen. Us to pull a pull the dual shot, uh, pulling the PS4 off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Oh dear, but yeah, professional in real life, terrible in video games. But anyway, hmm. um, you've got one bit of news, don't you? Left. I, I do. Talking about uh, not last eBay Expo, but the one before. Remember the Xbox indie title we've seen, Cuphead? Yes. Right, that was due for release this year because it is uh, based on the 1936 cell animated style cartoon. Yeah, the hand drawn stuff. So, uh, 36 was the 1936 was the first year that that became prominent and a. Um, technique used to create cartoons so they wanted to bring it out this year to celebrate 80 years of cell animation but it's been delayed to mid next year oh wow That's... so this so uh, we, we at our eb expo we've got a very own e3 exp- <laughs> experience they show you something and bring it out seven years later <laughs> yeah i know that's wow how is that game so hard to make i uh, i don't know but now get this We've still got an 80th anniversary because now it is the 80th anniversary in 2017 of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the first full feature-length animated film done in cell animation. Oh, there you go. 
So, yeah, so it was uh, originally announced in 2014, and it is a side-scrolling bullet hell shooter that draws its visual influences from the cell animated cartoons of the 30s, and it is now expected to be launched mid-2017 Xbox One and PC. Fucking hell, man. That's crazy. And it's going to come out, and it's going to be a $12 game. (laughs) You watch it get more expensive. You watch when this is released, it's actually going to be more expensive than probably what it's worth. Yeah, probably. And it's going to be a prick of a game. Oh, but it's condom- like a boss fighter, isn't it? Yeah, constant jumping and three lives and go back to start. Uh, Mighty Number no. 9 style um, permadeath or hardcore death modes. Mm. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, let, I'll let you play it. Delayed again. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, that's it for the news. Let's go into what's that sound? Yes. Right, so what's that sound? It's been a few weeks now. I think it was back at episode 144. We're at 146 now, the last time we did a sound. That last sound? I've got fucking no idea what it is, and I've got the answer right in front of me. Have you ever heard of Teen Girl St- Squad? Strong Bad's cool game for the attractive people. If strong Bad. I know what Strong Bad is. I don't. If you've forgotten what the sound is, that's this one. Boys love pubescence oh, perfume. Accentuate the awkward. Did you hear it? Nah. Oh, really? Because now you said it's strong bad. I want to see if I recognise any of. You don't know who strong bad is? Have you ever nah. heard the song Tr- Trogdor? Trogdor. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I know about that. That's strong bad. You, it, you should, yeah. YouTube Strong Bad Trogdor. It's probably got nothing to do with the game, actually. It's just probably a name. But mm. that, that game, I, I, I should have picked it because that was my game of the year in 1990. Never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, I think the settings, I've got the settings uh, a bit ass about in Skype, I think, because I remember I did muck around with them. It's probably why I can't hear it. But uh, I'll um, I'll play it through. Ah, you, sh- you should be able to I hear never it. Do it. Boys love pubescence perfume. Accentuate the awkward. All right, so, uh, yeah, that was whatever that sound was. <laughs> Do you want to hear the new one? Yes. All right, so I got this one off Repremier uh, just early, uh, just before we started recording the show. So let's have a listen to this one. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Oh, it's a WAV file. I'm going to set that up to play. <laughs> it's a Forrest Gump file. What's the? F- I don't get it. What's the Forrest Gump? Because he waves. Out, he waves all the oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> Dig up, stupid. All right, there we go. Hey, identify yourself, or I will open fire. Oh, listen, lady, please. We've been stuck here forever. Help us get an evac off world. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you shit piles give chase. I will kill your dicks. What? Uh. What does that even mean? You're gonna kill my dick? I'll, I'll kill your dick! How about that, huh? Oh, I know that game. What's it called? <laughs> is that the name of the I've game? Never, never played that. Oh, really? It hey, is. Yes. You miss out on so many cool games. This was made. That was made by the same people that made. Was it exclusive to the box? No, it was not. It was out on uh, on the PS3 as well. Okay, yeah. No, I never played it. Must have been playing Call of Duty 2. Cool game. Fucking glad we got one off Jason. <laughs> Fuck! 2-1. 2-1, to one. Two to one, boy! <laughs> Fuck! I just have to up, update. It's been a while since I've updated that. Now you're behind. I've got to win something. Yeah. Someone better put up a fucking Call of Duty multiplayer fucking <laughs> podcast, a fucking sound, and we have to pick the right Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, you'll nail that for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you All kill right. our dicks, I'll kill your dicks. Yeah. <laughs> so many dicks, I like it. I know, but it's a woman. I like dicks. I uh, mean... <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Yeah. I meant to say chocolate. All right, uh, that's what's that sound for this week. If you think you know what that sound is, because we rudely bleeped out all the bits that gave it away, send us a message to the Facebook page and tell us what you think it is. If you're right, we'll give you a free Steam game. If you're not right, we may probably just give you one anyway. So just uh, send that through there and uh, see how we go. Thank you. Yeah, I, might have, I might have made the promise. <laughs> you did, but that's I've made the promise many times. Happy to give them away before they go stale. All right, that's it. Uh, let's move on to the next segment, Red's Shout. Okay, well, as uh, a lot of you know, or well, as you know, Luke, I'll talk to you because I like talking to you. Well, I'm the only one listening right now. <laughs> right now. Um, we've been trying new things on the page. We've been making some videos. We've been coming at you live, pre-recorded, uh, unboxings, how-tos, FAQs, FUCKUs. Hey, Red. <laughs> yes. Hashtag BAM. Hashtag BAM! <laughs> <laughs> if anyone ever hashtag BAMs and sends it to the page by a, by a public post, I'll reply with the video going BAM! And then yeah, end that it. Has, that has to happen. That'll happen. I'm not, not afraid to do so. Um,. And fair to say we're getting a little bit of a cult following, Luke. I think people yep. might just like us. Yeah, I think so. I get that impression anyway. Hmm, that's the impression that I get. Good song. Anyway, so we yesterday I'd done a live Reds recap and you'd done a live uh, Name My Styrofoam Head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm basically just going to call out the, if I miss any, Fuck me. Um, but I'm going to call out uh, all the people that I can recall that joined us uh, for the videos uh, during and post. So there's your brother, Stephen. There's Ross Mark. There's Ben Smith, a personal friend of mine. Brendan Thompson. Brendan Brown. Matt Turvey. George Schneider. Reuben Reuben. Cooper Lane. Caleb Walker. Robert White. Aiden Stewart. Stephen Pratt. Tracy Masters. Uh, Daniel Ditcham. Terry Leeds, Mark Harvey, and Sean... Craig Thompson. Sean Craig Thompson and Ashley Farrow. So, because you've liked, commented, or all the above, I will be uh, putting a comment on those posts, letting you know you all got a shout-out. And if you listen to this, let me know. Just just, just for our... uh, Egos. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, just so we know we're getting it out there. <laughs> five, don't review this and give it five stars. That's reverse psychology for you. What do want? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you to Luke for the the medium upon which to give this, um, and the confidence for us all to be able to do what we want how we want and just have the confidence that you'll back us up and teach us how to do it good uh i just just love aussie gamers express and um it's feeling really good at the moment not that it never has not felt good but it just feels really positive and uh yeah shout out to everyone everyone that plays games you get a shout you get a shout <laughs> everybody gets a shout <laughs> And if you don't believe me, I had my hands up in the air doing the Oprah. Yeah, I am. Uh, now I'm. There's my cardio for the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, um, I, I don't think there was any better. I'm well. I'm giving the prize away, so I'm choosing the answer. I love the name. Oh, during, during the live ben stream, Ross, dude, I didn't even say his name. Ben Ross. Did you miss Ben Ross? Did you? I must have. Yeah, there's lots there. Oh no, there was a lot, a lot there. Uh, I gave away a Halo figurine. It was a Master Chief little figurine there during the live stream for the PlayStation VR with uh, trying to get somebody the name the Styrofoam Head. And Ben Ross came up with Heady Eddie, <laughs> which I like for reasons I'm not going to explain. But my little uh, PlayStation VR head that uh, where I put the VR when I'm not using it is now called Heady Eddie. And he may, take, uh, may turn up in some videos... For the next uh, review that I do of a headset, I'll use uh, Heady Eddie. And he may get uh, some makeup on him because my wife and daughter want to put makeup on him. Did you see my styrofoam head when you were here? Uh, yes, I did. 
Yeah, because yours is yours is almost exactly the same as mine, though mine's hot glued to a, a hump of timber. Yeah, which I will do eventually. Because, but mind you, that was something I pointed out in the stream last night. Considering it's not on any base like that, the VR balances on it really well. <laughs> and that's only because of the VR's balance, not because of anything to do with the base of those styrofoam heads, because yeah, they're no. flimsy as fuck. Absolutely, like a slight bump will push it over. But putting the VR on it stabilizes it. Centers it, yeah. Yeah, it does does really well. That's just a testament to how well balanced and how comfortable the VR headset is. So, um, thanks to Ben Ross for his idea of Heady Eddie. He's uh, he's won the, the Halo Master Chief figurine. So, I'm going to need him. I'll message him throughout the page. But I'll need him to send me some form of uh, postal address to uh, to shoot it off to him. So congratulations. But uh, also Red, uh, actually, that's probably Last Shout stuff, but are you done with, with Red Shout? Yeah, thanks, Cover. Cool. All right, we'll do last words. Kind of had a bit of uh, last word stuff at the end of that one, but I guess now we're officially in there. What I wanted to mention was, uh, Red, you're doing your Reds recap every day, every second day. And uh, yeah. I had the idea that I'd like to fill the air every other day. So the days mm-hmm. that you're off, I was going to do a short five-minute video or something like that. I haven't really had a big idea, like massive ideas that I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Have you had any yet? No. No, I was thinking about calling it the last 48. Oh. And because it's going to be every 48 hours or so, the last 48, and uh, broaden it. Like you talk about in your one, Reg Recap, you talk about Netflix, you talk about the games you're playing. I was thinking of broadening it towards, okay, if I played games, that's Aussie Gamers thing there, of course, we're going to talk about the games I'm playing, but broadening it further as well, if there's anything interesting out there in the world of technology, you know, like um, with that crazy, crazy motherfucker with his Tesla cars, um, bringing out the self-driving cars, maybe I might talk about that if it's in the news, uh, if there's anything, anything interesting tech based that may not be necessarily gaming only maybe bring that into it what do you think yes luke's last 48 yeah luke's last 48 Mm. and um yeah i think that's that's what i'll do just for five minutes bring up a a couple of topics like that techie and gadget or nerdy or something that's just exploded on reddit or in the news or a delay yeah that's that's fucking, fucking sick I'm always constantly thinking of ideas for Aussie Gamers Express, and I think that's somewhere where I might put those ideas out and get some feedback. Um, like with uh, Leo, Leo Bones is a character that we've got uh, for Aussie Gamers Express, but he's never he's never actually been released. So maybe we can tease a bit of those things and get some feedback from the community with uh, with my video, and also I can show what I'm working on. I'll maybe show the behind the scenes with the podcast, show you the setups that I've got on the computer, stuff like that. I think that's going to be different enough from what you do and still yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm set in my ways. Mine won't change because it's yeah, yeah. basically all about me. That's pretty good considering I think I just made that up just now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go with that. So we, I, you did um, your recap yesterday. Should yep. I start today with mine? I dare you. All right, we'll do it. It'll be six o'clock today. Mind you, this this comes out on Sunday, so it's going to be already there and a couple other your episodes afterwards. But that's what we'll do every other day. I think that'll work well. Yep. Any any have you got anything for last words? I do. Go ahead. I know someone's just listened to the shout and they've been um, absolutely devastated that they haven't been haven't been mentioned. Who listened to what shout? <laughs> There's someone, someone's there sitting there right now going, oh, I wasn't mentioned in the shout. It's oh. because they don't they don't deserve a shout. They deserve a fuck you. I don't want to sound queer or nothing. Oh, <laughs> Aiden. 
Aiden would be sitting there going, where's my shout, man? Where's mine? <laughs> yes. he, he, he goes, I only come along for the swearing, so he doesn't get a shout. He gets a fuck you. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> did you see the comment yesterday? He goes, I wanted it because I gave everyone the option whether they wanted it live or pre-recorded. They wanted it live. <laughs> Aiden yeah. wanted it live because there's more chance of slip-ups and swearing. Yeah, yeah, I did say that. And in, uh, in my live stream last night, he was saying, I don't want to be a queer or nothing but you've got a really sexy voice or something like that. He does yeah. like my voice. It was, he was the one that requested that uh, Bloodborne reading. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So uh, a very, very active member. So he gets his special own little last word instead of a um, instead of a shout with everyone else. That, uh, he, he's uh, this week's teacher's pet. <laughs> Lovely. All right, good stuff. Um, I think that brings us to the end of the show. It was uh, nearly nearly two hours long, that one, so there's a bit of content for the week for everyone. Well done. Ah, oh, it's good to be back into normality in yep. such, and with VR and AAA titles every now and again, the bloody game talk's probably going to go over now. That's it, and it's been a busy week with VR and all the cool games that are out, Gears and Mafia and all that. But anyway, we're finished But now. also, just, just, just oh. before that, yeah. also... Um, not that we're going to be changing shit on the fly all the time, but we're putting a lot out to the community um, how they want to do stuff. And I'm not even running this by you before running my mouth either. Um, today being the prime example, if you like the extra half hour, 15, 20 minutes of us talking to and fro uh, with uh, game talk, and you prefer that over us having three news items each, and we could just take two plus a talking point like we had with the, the shipping of the VR today, let us know if you want more what's relative to what we're doing as opposed to what's going on in the world or if you want us to shut the fuck up and just give you six pieces of news each, then just put it forward to us. Well, every, yeah. every, every idea is taken on board. Yeah, absolutely. It, we, do the, we do the podcast because we enjoy it, but at the same time, mm. you guys got to enjoy it too. So if there's more of something you want or something you want less of or whatever, give us the feedback, let us know. But five-star mm. review. That's the, how much it'll cost you. <laughs> I'll get me clothes off. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Not going there. Anyway. Oh, you didn't knock me back when I was there. Yeah, but that was in private. I'm not broadcasting that shit either. <laughs> even if it's just audio. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. I've got a reputation to uphold. I'll uphold something. <laughs> I don't have a reputation. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Is that it, Red? All good? That's, uh, that's it, Cobber. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, that's the end of the show. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll catch you guys all next week, guys and girls. I am, as always, Lucas Aurelius. And just because I wanted to be special this week, I'm red. (laughs) (laughs) Have you got cheese? Oh, sorry about that. The show is over. While you wait for the next show, check out Aussie Gamers Express on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and everything else that teenagers know how to use better than us. If you want to send us an email, send it to info at aussiegamersexpress.com and check out our website at www.aussiegamersexpress.com. We will be talking at you soon enough on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. Let's go.